Hey everyone, welcome back to Factor Fictional, the show where we put pop culture, tech, and science to the test. You like giant robots, right? I know I do. So today we're going to talk about them. Actually, all right, so there's this movie Pacific Rim coming out. It's got giant robots, it's got sea monsters, and it got me thinking. We've covered sea monsters in the past, kind of, with the cephalopods, you know, the giant squid attacking, attacking ships and people out in the sea. But this is a little more on the ridiculous side of things. But, you know, I was on this panel recently at Engadget Expand uh, with Daniel Wilson, who is, of course, the author of Robopocalypse. And I'm like, this is a guy. This is a guy that knows a thing or two about robots. Maybe I should bring him on the show to talk about Pacific Rim. So he's going to come on today. We are going to ask him your questions. Um, actually, we got one on Twitter from Joey. Joey wonders, at Veronica, why build a robot with legs to fight a monster in the water? Why not use the helicopters that carry the robot and pick up the monster? So the helicopters would fight the monster in the ocean. Well, why use a helicopter to fight a monster in the ocean? Why not use a giant submarine with like nuclear bombs or, or something like that? I mean, this is a logistical question and, and we are going to get to the bottom of this stuff with Dan. Daniel, thank you so much for joining us on the show today. Hey, thanks for having me. So give me give me your robot pedigree. Okay, uh, I started out studying computer science and I figured out that you could actually study robotics and artificial intelligence. And so I went away to graduate school at Carnegie Mellon and ended up uh, uh, with a PhD in robotics and master's in artificial intelligence and a master's in robotics. And so then you brought this to, to fiction writing. And then I, instead of building robots, I immediately started <laughs> writing stories about robots because it's so much faster, and uh, the robots are a little bit cooler, I think. Why do you think that robots have so captivated popular culture? Well, I don't know. You know, robots started out as just pop culture icons, right? So, like, in the 50s and 60s, they were sort of inexplicably stealing women. Like, I don't know what the robots were going to do with the women, but they were taking them. And then eventually robots, you know, became a real thing. You had the Unimate robotic arm and, and industrial robots, and now we see, like, all kinds of robots. It's impossible to categorize them all. So this transition that they've made from something pop culture to something real, I think is why we can they continually come up and we are always end up thinking about them. Mm -hmm. So I brought you on the show today to talk specifically about Pacific Rim. Um, have you seen any any bits of the film yet, any clips? Are you excited about it? I'm kind of excited about it. Not necessarily because of the robot 100%, but just because it's a giant monster movie. And I haven't seen one of those in a long time. And I don't know if I've ever seen one that like takes itself seriously, barring, of course, the classic robot jocks, which <laughs> if you haven't seen it, you need to run, not walk. I uh, have not seen it. Yeah, so it's like, it's exact, it's a, it's a movie where nations fight their battles with giant robots. And uh, does it have a giant robot with a chainsaw where uh, the crotch is at? Yes, it does. Of course it does. It's a well done giant robot movie. Because at the end of the day, if you can't put a giant chainsaw in the crotch of a robot, why are you building robots? What are you doing with your life? I mean, what are you Honestly. doing with your life? <laughs> Write fiction instead. You know? <laughs> so we have a question from Darren G. He wants to know uh, your favorite robot from Pacific Rim and other stories. Would you say it would be the robot with the chainsaw in his crotch? <laughs> that one, clearly. I don't know what it's called yet, but that's obviously my favorite one. And the look of, you know, surprise and terror on the giant fish or the giant alien or whatever, the, the Cthulhu. Ooh. Yeah, the look on Cthulhu's face whenever the, cr the chainsaw crotch, com crotch ch saw comes out and uh, starts plowing in. That's going to be my favorite part of the movie, I think. I did not know that Cthulhu had a face other than menacing or otherwise otherworldly. Yeah, oh, I imagine his multi multitudinous eyes will, will open and, and surprise, probably in dimensions we can't see, mm. but um, you know we can still appreciate it, hopefully. And then your brain explodes and your eyes bleed and all sorts of things happen. Um, nerd cute. is the word on Twitter, <laughs> is curious, how large can we actually make functioning robots? Uh, what's the biggest one in existence in the real world, if you know, and, and what are some of the limitations to, to building a giant, massive robot? I think that's 100% environmental constraints. So if you're in space, you can build, I mean, city-sized robots. You can go bananas um, on Earth or on a, you know, or on a planetoid with our level of gravity. I think you're pretty, you're much more severely limited. You know, um, building a robot that's going to actually locomote and be the size of a, of a skyscraper, uh, probably not feasible any time ever. Uh, you could argue that you could do it if you had advanced enough materials that were light enough and, and enough power mm -hmm. and everything. And I guess if you just had limitless power, you could do it. But 
it would be really it would be really inefficient. It it looks much cooler, you know, <laughs> than uh, on the big screen than it would be to actually sit down and try to build it. That's exactly what I was trying to figure out. Like, what would power these robots at the end of the day? It would have to be like mythical fusion power or something. Unobtainium or something. Unobtainium. I, I Maybe that's why they're plundering all the... <laughs> <laughs> so do you think robots are the weapon of the future? Is this what people, mankind, is going to turn to, like your chainsaw? I'm, I'm totally fixated on chainsaw crotch robot now. I can't get that <laughs> in my head, so thanks for that. Um, is that going to be what we fight the, the wars of the future with? Well, I think absolutely. I mean, a, a robot is a tool, and uh, weapons are tools just like anything else. And, and as we get better and better at building robots and making autonomous weapons, I mean, that's one domain where it just makes perfect sense to use a robot. Robots are typically used for dull, dirty, and dangerous tasks, and war is all three of those. So, yeah, we're absolutely going to use more robots. I mean, in terms of using gigantic humanoid robots, that would be really cool. I would love it if that's how our nations worked out their problems or if that's how we dealt with invading aliens. Uh, but, um, but I don't really foresee those in the future. And in fact, the best reason to use a humanoid robot is because it's people-sized, because it can operate in environments that have been designed for, by and for human beings. So if you build a humanoid robot and then you make it even eight feet tall, that's a dumbass move. It's gonna hit its head every time it walks through a doorway, right? That's I true. mean, unless, it's, um, unless you're gonna send it out into the wilderness or something. And again, it, probably a quadruped would be better in that scenario. Yeah, frankly, we are just not that efficient of a design to begin with, probably, for a lot of tasks. <laughs> I'm overthinking it, I feel like. <laughs> so, no, I don't think so. I think that totally makes sense. Like, why would you build a giant humanoid-sized robot when, like, if that was the most, I, yeah, I, I don't think it makes any sense. Yeah, I would swarm it. I think if I was fighting those aliens, I would swarm it with lots and lots of little robots that could wriggle into the seams and maybe detonate uh, in timed patterns or something to sever limbs and I don't you know I'll write my own movie I guess that could well. be your next book so overall would you say giant massive robots of war defending mankind from an alien invasion probably not likely in our lifetime uh, let's not be sexist it's humankind uh, first of all <laughs> Sorry. Humankind, yeah. robot kind, all of those, yes. <laughs> Not likely. No, I don't, it's cool, but I don't think it's very likely. It would be badass, that's for sure. So we're going to give this one a fictional. Yeah, I would, unless Mecha Godzilla shows up. I don't know. Then yeah. anything's possible. <laughs> then what are you going to do? <laughs> what are you going to do? Daniel, thank you so much. Can you tell us where people can follow you online? Sure. Uh, my website is danielhwilson.com, and I'm on Twitter at danielwilsonpdx. Guys, I'm really sad. I really want giant robots to be a real thing. But unfortunately, as Daniel said, it is a big, fat fictional. So I don't know what's going to happen when the aliens really do come and invade our planet because we're not going to have giant robots to save us. So we're just going to have to band together like the scrappy humans we are, humankind to save ourselves. Uh, but anyway, I want to hear what else you want to see here on Factor Fictional. So you can tweet me at Veronica, you can post on, on Facebook, you can post on Twitter, you can post in the comments right below this very YouTube video, even leave a video response. If I use your comment on the show, I will send you some goodies, some wonderful things. Uh, but that's it for this episode. Make sure you stay tuned to all new episodes coming out every Friday right here on TechFeed at youtube.com slash techfeed. And I will see you guys next week.